Hi, my name is Philip Stark, and I'm going to tell you about some materials that I've developed over the course of uh, roughly the last 15 or 16 years for teaching introductory statistics online. These materials would be the basis of uh, the MOOC that we're proposing, although some of the mathematical content would be toned down to make the course more accessible to uh, really introductory uh, students who don't have any quantitative background. So this is an example of the syllabus, and uh, to give you an example, I'm going to take you to one of the chapters, show you a little bit of the initial reading, and then show you the corresponding assessment. So here, chapter five, this is a chapter on multivariate data and scatter plots. In this particular case, these data are about the uh, undergraduate GPAs and the GMAT scores of 913 students who got into one of five good business schools. The data about individual variables are not that interesting. The interesting questions here are more how these variables relate to each other. For example, how well can you predict somebody's performance in the MBA program knowing their undergraduate uh, GPA and their GMAT classes? So the fundamental tool for looking at that is a scatter plot. Um, this lets you, you know, plot bivariate data. You can change the variables that you're plotting against each other, so forth and so on. This is the first time the tool shows up in the book, and as a result, it doesn't have a whole lot of features. But later in the book, as new concepts are revealed, the tool will acquire more buttons. It'll acquire more functionality to go along with the concepts. As the students go through the material, there are little self-assessment questions embedded in the text. If they reload the page of the textbook, they get a different uh, randomly varying assignments. Sometimes the wording changes, sometimes the numbers change. So once they've attempted, they can, see a, they can see a detailed solution. So typically, students will go back and forth between the graded assessments and the chapters, getting as much practice as they need in order to get a threshold level of mastery of the material. But to go back now to the assignments, once students have done this, they would click on the assignment for this chapter. There's a new data set being introduced, in this case from the US Census. Down in the lower frame, there are the tools they need in order to solve the problems. When they get done, they would press submit. I grade using a mastery model. You have to get above 80% on, on a given assignment to get any credit at all for the assignment, but you get five attempts on the assignment in order to get that threshold. To try to do mastery-based assessment for even a few hundred students, much less tens of thousands of students, is utterly impossible without having uh, machine-graded assignments. If we go here to uh, online lectures, this is a YouTube playlist from a version of the class that I gave in fall 2009. We have metadata for all of these lectures so that the timestamp at which I discuss each topic has actually been flagged. They can find the starting point in each of the lectures in which I talk about the binomial distribution linked directly into the minute where that topic is discussed. One of the things we're planning to do as part of this project is to work on the UI for that so that people can actually search by topic, you know, find a list of links, deep links, deep anchors into the lectures. Um, I mentioned before that the tools acquire more features as the corresponding concepts are introduced as the book progresses. So just, just to give you an example for that scatter plot applet that we were looking at, in chapter five, this is what it looks like with all the bells and whistles. There are a lot more things that you can do. You can look at the residuals from a regression line. You can plot a regression line. You can plot a graph of averages, all sorts of features that uh, are revealed as the corresponding concepts are introduced in the text.